Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure good to evening, have sir. you. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening. It's a pleasure to have you all in this session that is uh, organized by uh, Sagar, sir. And uh, yeah, it was, of course, a last minute call uh, well, from our end. And I'm sorry for that. The thing is that even I am sitting remotely. All are, of course, all are sitting at their own home. But then, why guy came here for a consultancy job? And then, because of the corona, I got stuck and I'm in the hotel for last one month. So, anyway, I just thought that uh, last night I was chatting with uh, Sagar and then I just happened to ask him if he needs any help since I'm in the hotel. And then Sagar sir said, okay, that, that will be good if you can share or talk on some topics. So that's how this morning we decided to have a um, kind of a presentation on directional drilling. So I don't know how we are going to interact, but whoever may have any questions, they can send ask your questions later on after the presentation because I don't think there is any option. You guys, please. yeah. Uh, this is Sagar. Yes. Uh, anybody wants to ask question? There is a chat box on the left hand side here. So they can uh, ask questions while live streaming. So how we will do? We'll uh, have the questions later, or we can have simultaneously. Up to you. At the end, we'll do. They can uh, just post their questions here. And at the end, you can read the questions and answer. OK, we'll have a question answer session then at the end. OK. You guys can drop your questions, and then we can have questions the question answer session. And, uh, sir, one more minute. Yep. Uh, I would like to thank you for uh, accepting this uh, request at a short notice. It's, it's my pleasure. Uh, Sagar, I have seen you a number of times struggling to get hold of the field people. It is uh, really uh, good for the students and the, uh, the young generation. So that's a that's, uh, good uh, initiative that we always uh, struggle for. So. We have always been guiding mm -hmm. students as well as. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's begin with this. Sagar, can you all hear me? Yes, sir, all can hear you. Okay. Uh, okay, to my understanding, I have students of part one and part two, Petrotech. So for part two, it won't be very much difficult to understand this. But then part, uh, part one, they should take it as a, um, Intro introductory thing and whatever they don't understand they can ask me in person and later on even if you even if i try to explain you you won't be able to understand few things of this reason is you have not completed your drilling paper yet so once you are done with your drilling part you will be able to understand what i speak in this direction drilling okay what is directional drilling? Directional drilling is a technique. We drill n number of wells. So very initially or in the beginning, initially or in the beginning. Um, Sagar, hold on. I'll be back. There is a disturbance here. Just give me two minutes, guys. OK.
sorry friends well um, yeah talking about the wells drilling wells initially the wells were drilled and those were drilled very conventionally because of lack of the uh, technology people or the industry they were drilling only vertical wells and there was one more reason to drill a vertical well in the beginning that or they never got a thought to go for a directional well is that there was the reservoirs were very giant and there's ample of oil present in that so vertical wells were sufficient to produce the oil but eventually as we continue drilling as the as the reservoir started expleting and as we started moving offshore and deep, deep water drilling environments there was a need to come take a, take the help of uh, technology that is called directional drilling of course if you compare direction drilling with the conventional drilling direction drilling is quite expensive compared to the conventional drilling reason is very expensive tools are used for direction drilling very first thing is there is a tool called rss rotary steerable system so that is the latest technology what we have in the market and it's quite expensive so that and also we have mwd and lwd tools in the bha so that makes the assembly or the operation or the directional operation as a whole a very expensive operation conventional drilling we drill vertical we just use the bit drill collars heavy weight drill pipes drill string and couple of stabilizers based on the well profile so that was the con conventional bha that we use to drill a direction, uh, horizontal vertical well now talking about the directional well why do we need direction uh, need a well which will or basically let's define what is directional drilling as i said earlier the wells were drilled vertically but as we as the technology evolved then we started drilling deviated wells high inclination wells horizontal wells and multilateral wells also extended reach wells so these terms you will understand later you don't have to get into those extended reach and all that but yes eventually you'll come to know it's or you can just explore and google it you will get the definitions and it's not very difficult to understand that so what is directional drilling directional drilling is intentionally deviating a well from vertical so there is a need for deviating let's say if if we start drilling or start rotating pipe it has a tendency to go vertically down as we all are science student we know it's the gravity which pulls towards the center of the earth so that's the reason it has a tendency to go straight but if we have if there is a need to drill a deviated well or high angle well or horizontal well they we have to deviate the well from vertical so when we say the well is vertical that means the angle of the well is zero now how the angle of the well is zero this is i'm trying to explain the first year students we have an just imagine a vertical hole drill in a drill in the earth and then draw imaginary axis like we have y axis vertical y axis so that is imaginary line and when we drill a well vertically so that well profile the vertical profile and the y axis line they are parallel to each other so that makes it zero degree angle or we call it a vertical angle a vertical well now once we start deviating once the well start moving away from vertical i'll explain you how the well is moved away from the vertical that's the direction drilling technique technique but once we start deviating from vertical then this y axis vertical y axis imaginary vertical y axis makes an angle with the well which is going away from the vertical so if you draw a tangent to the well profile and with the vertical so wherever it intersect the angle you see that is called the well angle 
Now, wh why do we need to have a directional well? This is the definition you may see. It is a technique where the well is intentionally deviated from vertical using various direction drilling tools. It's a simple definition, not very difficult, not very simple. Now, what are the reasons we need to have a directional wells or what are the applications of directional well? Very first thing is, you can see the very first point, that is site tracking. Second one, inaccessible location. Third, salt dome drilling. Fault controlling. Multiple exploration wells from single well ore. Onshore drilling. Offshore multi-well drilling. Multiple sand from single well bore. Relief well. And there is the last one, horizontal wells. Now let's see these applications one by one, what exactly it means. So let's talk about the first point or the first application is site tracking. The word itself is quite explanatory. Site track. Site se nikal jau. Make a track from site. Now why, why do we have to do this? Let's say most, uh, I cannot say nowadays most of the time, but when we are drilling at times we see there is a stuck pipe situation. Stuck pipe situation means while drilling you see something collapse on the top or there is a uh, differential pressure. So mechanical or there are different types of stuck pipe situations. So while drilling pipes they get stuck. Now once they get stuck we, we cannot pull out. Most of the time we get we succeed in pulling out the pipe but in some cases the pipe shares once we if we try to pull out it shares or else we have to free the pipe whichever is from the point where it is loose we have to free the uh, pipes and bring it to the surface and whatever is left below or the broken piece of the pipe broken part of the pipe or the partial bha or whatever is below the broken part that is left in the hole that is called fish, F-I-S-H, fish. Now, this fish, we decisions are taken based on all calculations. Calculation, that means economic calculation. That is it worth wasting time in pulling out that fish or pulling out the stuck pipes? Is it worth wasting time for that? And if it is, if the operations are very expensive, it's like sometimes we have very expensive rigs, drilling rigs. So the day rate is something now, the rig, I, I, the drill ship I'm, I'm working here, that is costing two lakhs dollars per day. So that's the rental of the drill ship. And apart from the drill ship or the rig, there are different associated costs. So that makes the operation expensive. So based on that, now why we try to retrieve the tool, we do some calculation that if the tool is very expensive, let's say a directional drilling tool, LWD tools, if these tools are very expensive, or if there is a radioactive source inside the tool, then we don't leave it behind. We try to retrieve it back. But if there is no source, and if the tool is expensive, but then your daily cost is going very high, then we prefer to leave the tool down, bury it, and then pull the rest of the string to the surface. Now, when we pull the rest of the string to the surface, while the fish is sitting down there, we put some cement, we pump cement, and seal the hole to some part, just a couple of meters or 100, 200 meters above the fish. We cement that part. Then again, we go with a new BHA motor, and couple of meters above, maybe 50 meters or sometimes 100 meters or sometimes 10, 20 meters above the fish top, we start deviating away, we sidetrack, we make a, another hole which goes out of the old hole or the motherboard. In order to bypass the fish or the whatever the stuck material down there, so we just simply deviate the hole, go down and then again go back, come back to the normal or whatever the next plan is. So that's how, that's what uh, it, 
that's what is called side tracking the well i hope you understand you guys can note down this point we have here 10 different applications any application you don't understand or you have any difficulty you can note it down and shoot me at the end i'll explain it once again because i don't know if you guys are understanding but i'm trying my level best to make you understand now the second point is inaccessible location second application is inaccessible location inaccessible location means we cannot reach yes sir Hello. Uh, so will you please uh, share the ppt on screen ppt is there oh my god you should have told me this earlier no 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 see that's that's what okay i thought you no i thought you start with after the introduction i'm oh, so sorry you should have gone Can you see now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let me let me go back to the first page again. This is the first page. We didn't move much. Yes. I just hope all everybody can see this now, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go. So this is the definition. It's a technique where the well is intentionally deviated from vertical using various directional drilling tools. It's just a simple definition. I explained you. These are the applications I was talking about. So we have 10 different applications here. Okay. Uh, Sagar, can you see, you guys can see my mouse also, right? Yes, sir. Let's go. Now there's the first I explained side tracking. Now there's a second application with, uh, which is inaccessible location. Now, inaccessible location, that means the location where we cannot reach. We cannot reach, that does not mean that I'm saying that as an individual, you cannot reach. I know you guys are young, but you can walk to any place, you can reach to any place. So, what I'm saying is carrying entire rig to that location or a workable location where you can locate your rig and start drilling. So this is location. I'll give you one example. Let's let's talk about a busy a city, urban area, or let's talk about a mountain. Under the mountain, let's say the reservoir is there under the mountain, or the reservoir is under the city. Now we are not able to, since this drilling operation is very hazardous. We always try to perform the activities away from the population. So if we talk about if we say that there is a reservoir under the city, in that case, we will move out of the city, we will prepare a location away from the city, make sure that everything is safe and uh, there are no associated hazards. Then we prepare the location, start drilling, then start building angle, go horizontal, make it 90 degree, go horizontal under the city, and hit the reservoir. Similarly, we do it when the reservoir is under some location, let's say there's a mountain or where we cannot uh, take the rig. So that's what we do. We uh, drill the wells vertically initially away from that place and then go vertically down, start building angle slowly, 1 degree, 2 degree, 10 degree, 15, 30, 40, 60, 90 degree, make the well horizontal and then go and hit the reservoir under the mountain. So this is the second part. Let's see the third part. Third application, it's salt dome. Salt dome, you, most of you are geology students, so I don't have to explain what exactly is the salt dome. But why do the very first uh, uh, safety, what do you call, the safe drilling practice we follow when we expect a salt dome is, we do not penetrate, we try not to penetrate the salt dome. Reason is, when we start drilling, we drill the salt dome, but with the drilling fluid, which is circulating all the time while drilling, 
the salt material it dissolves off and then that wash out we see that wash out of the hole we don't get the hole of the uniform diameter let's say i am drilling a 12 and quarter inch hole now and drilling through salt dome the hole above the salt dome will be 12 quarter hole below the salt dome will be 12 quarter but at the salt dome it may wash out and it may go to 25 inch 30 inch hole which is not good for drilling practice because we may see losses or we may see stuck pipe situation so in that case what we do we take the we we tap the location which is away from the salt dome drill vertical make the well horizontal and hit the reservoir which is under salt dome now under salt dome reservoir under under salt dome means what you must be knowing you might have studied in geology that salt dome is a good cap rock because it's highly intact a compact non porous so it becomes a it uh, becomes a cap rock for any reservoir if if we see the oil is migrating then you can expect it to uh, form a reservoir under a salt dome against a salt dome or under a salt dome now there is next application this is called fault controlling as a geologist you all know faults faults are the cracks or movements of blocks so those points are weak points or you can say there is a loose material or there are cracks developed laterally or even vertically also depth wise because of the lateral movement of the blocks lateral or vertical movements of the blocks now if we drill through the fault you imagine a fault line on the ground and you are drilling through the fault so what will happen basically if we are drilling through a fault whatever drilling mud we use that mud will be lost because there are cracks and the mud this is the mud we use for drilling is very expensive even you talk about the basic mud which is called water based mud that itself comes in crores for a single well crores of rupees and nowadays we use synthetic oil based mud sobm which is three times expensive than the water three or four times i don't remember but it is quite expensive compared to the water based mud so when we drill we need to have mud as a circulatory system that will go from the drill pipe come out of the bed carry the cuttings to the surface and then the same mud uh, the mud is cleaned and then the same mud is circulated so basically we have a constant volume of mud but if we encounter a fault and we are drilling through a fault there are fair chances of this mud not coming to the surface and it goes it is lost in the hole through the crack so that we do not want to get into that second associated problem with direction uh, problem in drilling through fault as i said along the fault line the rocks are weak fractured and it's not compact like a one solid rock so there are fair chance while drilling there are chances of collapsing the wall or the material or the rocks or whatever you can say the loose material it may collapse and may fall on the bed or stabilizer and then we see the stuck pipe situation the pipes we are not able to pull out the pipe so to avoid these problems two problems main two problems what we do is we select a location away from the fault drill vertical and bypass if you want if you see that it's on the other part of it then we go horizontal and tap it without passing through the fault now fifth application the multiple exploration wells from a single well bore you all heard that there are two different environments of drilling one is onshore and offshore drilling onshore is the land drilling and offshore is the sea drilling it can be sea it can be swamp or any place what we call it offshore environment now the offshore environment the rigs which are used for offshore environments are very expensive before the rig comes for drilling the client or the operator let's talk about let's say reliance ongc shell bg total these clients they have their fields they 
locate uh, based on the reservoir study they locate the coordinates they mark the coordinates from where they want to drill the wells and then on those coordinates they construct a platform like i'll give you an example we have lnt here in india larsen and tubro this company they do the infrastructure or the what do you call the fabrication kind of thing you might have seen the structures platform does not really mean a processing platform it's just like a tripod tripod stand or a table which is constructed and then there are slots provided in that so those are multiple slots through which they send the pipes down to the seabed so let's say one platform may have i have seen the biggest platform in qatar offshore doha lost him hello sir i guess his connection is low mm -hmm. okay